I wanted to give back since I'd had almost a second chance at life and I thought, what type of legacy do I want to leave behind? On November the 1st last year, it was my vegan anniversary and upon reflecting on my advocacy so far, I felt like I wanted to step it up a notch. Keep stepping it up and keep raising the bar. I'm always challenging myself and stepping outside of my comfort zone. Even the activists you might admire, they will still have their, still have their bad days. And I don't ever want to stop stepping out of my comfort zone. And at the spare of the moment, with the help of other organisers, we planned one of the biggest tours of my life. Alright, so we just landed in Doha, that was a 14 hour flight here, and we've got to make our next plane to Amsterdam. One of the toughest schedules of my life. And I recruited one of the toughest guys I know to be on camera. Saying that I, I can't go vegan because I'm going to lose muscle is just foolish. Abdullah Zainab. The intention was to create a massive impact in a short period of time. We're travelling all around Europe. Oh. Trying to convince people to stop harming animals. And get as much footage as we possibly could to help expose the horrors of animal agriculture. Educate the public. Their entire life gone for five minutes taste and inspire activists. Thanks for, uh, for inspiring me so much, man. I, I really, really appreciate it. My intention was to light up the world. I will be taking this fire inside of my chest to light up the world. And after many hires... Let's get some smoked tofu, make a sandwich. I feel really pumped after that. But thank you. Thank you. <laughs> many lows. I can't believe they're gonna murder them, eh? I'm really sad for them. Can I have a hug, please? Yes. Uh, becoming sick in the first week. I woke up this morning feeling really sick. I've got, I've been struck down with a bad flu. Me putting myself on the line like this inspires people. Having to use caffeine and energy drinks just to sustain the early mornings and late nights and high workload. Really tough. Like, this is a tough tour. I don't think this is sustainable, so I don't think I think this is some type of sustainable activism. Witnessing of the animals going into slaughterhouses. Really heart-wrenching. Felt like bawling my eyes out for them, hey. Standing inside the slaughterhouses and witnessing animals be slaughtered. Uh, there was just something about being there, bearing witness to the animals first, connecting with them, having them a, a really emotional, happy experience with the animals and then watching them um, be dismembered. We've learned so much and finally it's come to the end. So without further ado, here it is, the final city of the Light Up The World Tour. Thank you. All right, so just woke up. We're in Croatia, about to go to the gym. It's seven in the morning. Need to stop off and get some coffee first. But I have an interview with LBC Radio today. I checked their reach. They've got two million listeners, apparently. So we're gonna be talking about one of DXC's actions. And hopefully it's a good opportunity to speak for the animals. But let's go get some exercise in first. So this is the first tour that I actually incorporated some exercise into our routine and it has been fundamental in maintaining good mental health and just all round balance. And I'll definitely be including a good exercise regime as part of my future tours as well. Sometimes if there's like millions of listeners, you just gotta get in the mindset like it's just a small radio station. It doesn't, you know what I mean? It's more relaxing to know, like if I didn't check, the reach of this radio station, it, I would have a different perspective, you know what I mean? But when you start checking how many people are going to be listening, it can sometimes affect you in a certain way. But I'm starting to learn that um, you shouldn't let that get inside your head. You're better off just speaking from your heart as you would if it was just one person standing there on outreach and you're trying to persuade this individual and speak to their heart and their compassion, if there's two million listening at once, it's the same individual. It's just 
two million individuals listening. Don't invade a restaurant. It's simply not fair. Oh, do you want to talk about fairness and justice? It's not fair that we subjugate the most innocent beings on earth. That's not fair. Why are we doing it to them for? Why are you participating in this slaughter? Because people like the taste of meat. Ah, oh, so taste overrides morality now? I like the taste, it gives me pleasure. It gives me pleasure to abuse the innocent. <laughs> they are being abused. They're being bolt gunned in the skull and slashed across the throat because you like the taste of their flesh. It's a pig. It's a pig? Yeah, it's a pig. What, 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 what does that, that mean? mean? It's a pig. It's, it's a dog. It's, bred for the, it would, it's a dog. It would not be here. They are bred. They breed dogs in Newland for meat too. Is that moral? That is illegal in this country, to, to my knowledge, to eat dogs. That's got nothing to do with morality. Illeg legality and morality are two different things. He was the most, he was the most arrogant radio presenter I have ever met. Ever. He wouldn't let me finish, he kept cutting me off. Absolute nonsense that was. Hey you. Hello Danny. As you can see, I'm just so spent and tired here. But what better way to unwind after a hectic tour than to go and chill with some beautiful animals. Can we go in and meet them? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, boy. Oh, how are you? You're four years old. You're four years old? <coughs> Look at this quiet little angel over here doing some sniffing in the grass. Hello, darling. How are you? Hello. I can't deal with your face. I just can't deal with it. Wow, this is a bit more... This is a bit different to the last um, pigs we were bearing witness to. These animals will be protected. The other ones were being used, weren't they? You can go sniff around and play around here. No one's going to harm you. Oh my God, you're beautiful. Hello. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing animals that will be free from the harm of humans forever and get to live out their lives at a beautiful sanctuary. It's a beautiful place to reflect, it's a beautiful place to recover, and it was a beautiful place to spend my last day. Uh, you getting jealous? You getting jealous? Oh, look at his little butt. Adorbs. <laughs> wow. This is a little puppy. Hello. <laughs> By the way, hi. <laughs> oh, Rose is a bit. Oh, that's okay. That's okay, Rosie. We understand. Everyone's a little bit scary, aren't they? Rosie's a little bit scared, isn't she? She's only little. We've got all these dogs around where people are so used to dogs and... Then there's Rosie walking around. The only thing that's different about her is she looks different. But everything else about her is the same. these puppy kisses I'm getting. You good puppy? They just want loves, don't they? They all want loves, don't they? All of you want loves. And look, Rosie's smelling my foot down here. Hey, look, Rosie wants some loves as well. Maybe she can smell some of her friends on my feet and walk around and pick food and stuff. Rosie, you want some bread? Then you'll be my friend. Sometimes you have to bribe Rosie to get some friendship. I wouldn't trust humans if I was Rosie either. <laughs> oh, wow, well, here we go. Rosie, look. This is uh, species favoritism here, but I'm going to give Rosie some bread. Let's see if she wants some of this bread. 
Where is he? Look at that. <laughs> that is too much for me to handle. It's just bread. Do you want some? <laughs> God. Oh my God. She's got big, strong tea. You, what did you do that for? That's what I call bribery in action. She's really shy, like really shy of humans. Like I was saying, that's why breeding is so evil because you're breeding more into existence when all of these, all of these rescues need homes. If they don't find a home, they get euthanized, they get killed or they just get left on the street. So to breed dogs into existence to be your pet when all these animals need companions, it's not vegan, it's not right. This is a very um, fulfilling <laughs> moment. <laughs> You're only a little baby. Hmm? <laughs> I've never felt so much love in my entire life. <laughs> that was really nice of you, thank you. What's her name? Millie. I want to meet Millie the dairy cow. Apparently she was chained up for 10, 11 years. After she was a dairy cow, she was chained up in the facility. She was chained up in the... So they chained her up constantly. Yeah. They would yeah. use her for rectal exam training and stuff like that. Some of the trauma you suffer from that much abuse, you just never be the same again, you know? Okay, this beautiful angel here is Millie. She's a rescued dairy cow. Apparently she was chained up um, in a facility where they tested on her and done all these horrible, horrible things to her for about 11 years. So she's uh, in a good place now though. Who's the goat? Millie, you like your dinner? How does it feel to wrap up? It's like one of the most profound emotional roller coasters ever. Coupled with the stress and the uh, the workload and the travelling and the sheer magnitude of the suffering that we are witnessing worldwide, it's just uh, really peaceful here. In this little cottage out in the hills, rescued dairy cow here, having something to eat, just chilling. Little happy pigs. Happy rescue dogs, happy sheep, happy times. <laughs> Hello beautiful. You got your food all over your face. Hello darling. We love you. We love you. We love you, Millie. You're very special. Millie's like a big puppy dog. Don't you? They're so gentle and shy and peaceful, cow. Big, gentle, sentient animals. You're a big, gentle, sentient animal, aren't you? For introducing us to your lovely animals, they're beautiful. Thanks for looking after them. Thanks for coming, you're tired. It's a lot of work to look after so many animals, and hopefully maybe we'll see you next time we're in Croatia. <laughs> oh, when will that be? See you, darling. <laughs> All right, so here we are. This is the final day, the final speech, number 15, and we're about to walk in. Kind of feels surreal, really. This is the last energy drink I'm going to drink. Let's see if I can do the last speech with as much energy as I did the first one. The 
This speech is very important because this is actually the last and final speech of the three week Light Up The World Tour. So I've done 15, this is number 15 actually, so I've already done 14, so. So you get the very last of me in Europe and I'm actually quite tired, emotionally, physically, mentally exhausted, but we're going to give you the best workshop I possibly can. I always finish my workshops and this is my last one of the tour, so I'm a little bit emotional about that. I've done a lot of, done a lot of these workshops and I try to give my best through them all. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to travel and to meet so many people and to bear witness out the front of so many slaughterhouses in such a short period of time and to do outreach and debates and, you know, uh, still give my best for these speeches, but it's been like a roller coaster ride, a very important experience for me to have. I've met so many um, amazing, inspired, motivated vegans all over Europe. This vegan movement is growing all over Europe and all over the world. In the UK, in Australia, in America, in Canada, everywhere, okay? It's amazing. It should fill you with um, excitement and joy that this is soon to be ended. This isn't going away, this movement is not going away. It's just getting stronger and people are being more determined. Okay, so there's definitely, there's more than hope, okay? The world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who stand by and watch. So let's get out there and do something. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey brother, how are you going? All of us? Yeah. Three of us. Vegan world, vegan world. Oh, hello, how are you? So happy to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much. That's so lovely. Ah, oh, thank you. We got cube and then we're gonna go home, go to sleep, and we got an airport in the morning. Look at this cake. Look at it. Are we gonna eat it? This is you know what this cake is for? This is to celebrate the end of, the, of an amazing tour. Okay? This is an emotional piece of cake. Delicious vegan cruelty-free piece of cake. It symbolizes animal liberation and the success of the video series when this is uploaded and how many people it's going to influence to be activists and how many people it's going to influence to be vegan. Oh my Lord, have mercy. Mercy. That was really good. I'd love to chat and forever, but we have a, a cube to do. Why is it enough to go only to go vegan? Why should you become an activist also? Because when you go vegan, you just stop contributing to the harm to animals. You realize you've been contributing to their harm unnecessarily and you stop, okay? You are then in a neutral position, okay? Yeah. And if you see someone being harmed and you don't actively try to stop them, yeah. that's an, in, an injustice in itself. Okay, witnessing what's happening to animals and not actively trying to stop it. As vegans, we know what happens to animals. We have a moral responsibility to speak up about it, okay? You cannot bear witness to what's happening to animals without intervening. Because if that was human beings, children, dogs, you would intervene, you would do something to stop that. So that's why being vegan just isn't enough anymore. We all must work together to end the system that exploits and harms animals. When we buy animal products and we eat that animal product, we are supporting the worst animal abuse on earth, okay? Slaughterhouses, farms, they abuse animals, they kill them, they use them as products. We don't need to. Vegan lifestyle healthy, we've got burgers and cheese and ice cream and no one has to be harmed. You need to have perspective. Animals are suffering in their own blood in a slaughterhouse, okay? They're being stabbed to death, subjugated, having their family separated. Have that perspective. If it was you, would you want me speaking for you, okay? Now, you only get one life. Spend it doing something noble. Give back. Do something altruistic. 
and let's help the innocent beings. They need you, okay? And you can do something. Everyone can do their part in their own way. We work together and, yeah. Thanks, brother. Give us a hug. Nice Good to meet you, man. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Cheers, brother. So, so I'm just, just, we've done so much, man, and I'm so exhausted. Really All right, so here we are. We're at the last event of the Light Up The World Tour here in Croatia. It's been an emotional roller coaster, and we are so exhausted. It's been 100% worth it, though. I am literally completely exhausted all of my energy has just been put out and now we're going to go home our head is going to hit the pillow and I'm going to put all of this footage up for the world to see so if you're watching this video you've literally watched hours and episodes of us traveling all around Europe okay so it's been a milestone Abdullah filmed every step of the way been crazy, sad, tiring, stressful, happy, motivating, inspiring, but it's all over now. It's the last cube, the last event, and now we go home. Goodbye. Fatigue, physical. Exhaustion. No, not mental Exhaustion. burnout. No, yeah, I can no keep doing it. I'll go do this all next year as well. <laughs> There's a fire inside your heart. And let it light up the world. Light up the world. This guy is like sick fuck, man. As soon as, I'm, <laughs> as, soon as it's all up online, I'm giving that daughter another call. Hey, bro, you want to go round two? <laughs> he was sleeping. Round two, uh, the whole of China next.